Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. How are you? Fine, teacher. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Teacher, Hello. I have a question okay. uh, about the platform. Mm -hmm. Este on task uh, one point seven. Mm -hmm. este, um, I don't know the solution. One point seven. Let me just bueno, check. Uh, okay, yes, I know which one is this. Everything is correct, only the number two is, even if you put it correct, it's not going to be correct. So the first one, for example, is going to be, retailers help you produce as much profit as wholesaler. Number two is going to be, let me just check. Um, Number two is going to be the shipment will be delivered as soon as the payment is received. But you put okay. it there and it's not correct. So it's a problem in the platform. Ah, uh, okay, teacher. Uh, las otras se las tiene bien. Sí, teacher. Lo que pasa es que este, estaba revisando el, el, este, con el progreso. Me dice que lo tengo en 99%, pero, pero... Este, al desglosar cada uno de los puntos me sale que en la sección 1 tengo 16 de 20, ¿verdad? O sea, no sé por qué. Este, al final ahí tengo 96%. En la unidad 2, ahí sí, ah, tengo un, un 8 sobre 20 y me quedó en 98%. Pero sí, es estoy eso. revisando uh -huh. que está bien toda la unidad 2. Eh, sí, está, o sea, es un error de la plataforma. Sí, lo vimos hace a, algún tiempo, ¿verdad? Que, uh -huh. Yo lo reporté, pero eso no lo, no lo arreglan inmediatamente. Sí, porque, 
eh, de hecho hoy, hoy pusieron un mensaje este, que habían estado, está, estaban trabajando en eso, de la plataforma. Sí, pero es mantenimiento, no estaban arreglando las cosas, era mantenimiento. Ah, ok, pero no hay problema, ¿verdad? No, si usted tiene más del 80% en la plataforma, no hay problema. Ahora, yo sé que es un problema porque lo podemos tener al 100, ¿verdad? Por eso yo siempre lo reporto, pero sí, eso, de hecho hay otras dos más adelante, no sé si hizo todo, eh, pero hay otras dos que también tienen problemas, entonces también ya se reportaron y espero que ya por el 2028 ya esté arreglado. No, pero teacher, yo solo esas dos, fíjese, solo esa precisamente esa pregunta está mala para mí, de ahí ah, todo okay. lo tengo, lo tengo bien, por okay, eso es que creo que me quedó en 99% el, el final de la plataforma. Sí, yo pensaría que nadie le va a quedar el 100% por esta, por esta situación que, que se ha dado en estos ejercicios, pero si lo demás está bien, so that is nice, everything is fine. Ok, teacher, thank you. Good, perfect, perfect. Hello everybody, how are you today? Are you ready for rock and roll? So we are Hello, going... Teacher. Hey, good evening. I'm ready. Good. Welcome to the class then. We're going to check. Okay. So uh, as usual, we're going to check about the platform. So this is the video of today. Um, actually, that is what we checked yesterday. And here is the question already. And also you will find the question for tomorrow. So all the questions are there already. So you will be able to just do that one. And remember that before the class of tomorrow, tomorrow in the morning, no, in the morning I won't be able to, but in the afternoon, I will be sending via chat if, there's so, if there is somebody that is missing some exercises. Tomorrow we need to finish everything, right? If you finish already the platform, fine. That is very good. That is amazing. If you haven't finished, you still have tomorrow during the day. Remember that tomorrow at midnight, the platform will be closed. And if you don't finish, you won't have more time to do the exercises. So if you finish, amazing. If you haven't finished, tomorrow during the day, please try to finish, okay? It's okay. Okay, any questions about this? No, it's not a Very good. So we're going to check the attendance. So, Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Presentation. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Osmin Baire Solórzano. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening. Present. Good evening. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Present. Sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosabra López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Ana Michelle Guevara. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Perfect. So we're going to start the class of today. 
we finished already the book, but we're going to check some other details about inventory and about, um, yeah, inventory. So just to finish. So it says, uh, this is like a process, a process for inventory. So there are three things that are important. The input, the process, of course, and the output. When we're speaking about inventory management. So we have raw materials. You know, what is that one, right? What, how can you describe raw materials in this process? What is raw materials? In the case, um, in the sector, the manufacturing, the raw material is the material the input, input for the production process. Good, that is it. So it's like the materials that you are going to use to produce something, right? That is it. Consumables, anybody knows what is consumables? Maybe the consumab consumables are the packaging for packaging. the clothes. Very good. Things the that labels. The labels, nice. Yeah. So yeah, consumables are things that help you building the product, but it's not part of the product. It's not part of the product itself. Maintenance items, that is very easy. What is maintenance items? It's spare parts, teacher. Yeah, it's like parts that you use. I mean, you need to, to keep everything clean and nice and organized. So for you to work well and everything is stored well, of course you need things like that. Packing materials. So this is more related to the one that Rose was saying. That is like the labels, the boxes, the bags, anything that is related for the packing. And the other one is local purchase items. So it's are things that are related to the warehouse or to the process, but are not things that we purchase with a vendor. So it's going to be like other kind of things. Then we have the process. So we have work in process. What is work in process? Production in progress, teacher production and progress. So it's not raw material anymore and they are not finished goods. So they are the ones that are in process and at the end of the day, just stop and they are there. But it's not one or not the other. So it's something that is in process. Of course, depending on the production, that might be a lot or just few. I mean, it's not the same to produce shirts than to produce cars, right? The other one is a semi-finished production. What do you think is that? Semi-finished production. What is that? Product in development. In development, but I mean, sometimes there are different procedures, right? Sometimes you do one, two, three procedures inside of the production process. Sometimes you finish the first procedure and then it's waiting. So it's finished one part already complete, but not the whole thing. So that is yeah. it. In this case, uh, no have package. Uh, yeah, that might be an option, very good. So sometimes the product is already done, but you need to package or label or anything, so good. Production wastes and scraps, what is that? When you select the product and and good, bad, or maybe? Well, that is it. Sometimes in the production, there are products that are not good at all, right? Or there are materials that also you were not able to use it because of many reasons. Or like quality of the product? Quality is the one that is, uh, yeah, is uh, the one that checks into this one, right? So it's like, this one are like the, the ones that are not going to be used anymore. And the last one is rejections and defectives. What is that? Uh, 
rejections and defectives. When the product or, or service is bad? Okay. When the products, yeah, sometimes there are finished goods, but they are not good. I mean, the quality is not good, the size, the color, something happened and you, you know that the, uh, the consumers, the customers, they are not going to purchase that one. So those are rejected and they are not to sell, they are not good to sell. Of course, we have the output. We have finished goods. So those are the ones that are nice, right? The ones that we are going to sell. The factives, uh, what is that? So this is like the ones that we discussed before, right? The factives are like products that are not in good condition. Some companies, sometimes they sell them at a lower price, but that depends on the product, of course, right? The rejects are things that are not going to be for sale. Sales returns, I know that you know that one, right? So when you sell something and they, the, the consumer returns the product because of many reasons. I mean, in the US, you can return something because you don't like it. Here in El Salvador, it's not possible, right? You can return something because the condition was not good, uh, it didn't fit, or it's not the one that you ordered, things like that are valid. But in the US, of course, depending on the product, you will be able to return something just because you don't like it. No questions asked, they say. You go back and you say, I want to return this. And they say, yes, of course, here is your money. Goodbye. Repair stocks and parts. Sometimes it's possible to repair or to get something to get a part of the finished good and use it for other products. So depending, of course, of the product. If it's a bottle, for example, it's not possible. But there are some products that will be able to, to do this kind of situations. Sales promotions and sample stocks. What do you understand on this? The examples that you have to promote your product, maybe? Yeah, and marketing, sometimes they they make some strategies, right? Why don't we go to the supermarket and give for free some samples, right? Why don't we go to, I don't know, a fair or in a, in, in an ale in a mall uh, and they, they give you for free a sample so you taste so you try and then in the future you decide to buy so that is it good do you have any questions on this okay so there are 10 steps in retail uh, inventory management i'm going to present this one because it's, the letters are a little bit small let me just check into this okay here is it Okay, so these are 10 steps in retail inventory management. Let's see. Um, Susana, could you please read the first one? Good. Okay. Create and centralize a record of all products. Very good. And what do you understand on that one, Susana? You need... Um, Warehouse, I think it's relation that. Oh, definitely. All it's in, really... the, in the one place for a good distribution. That is it. So you need to send a, create a centralized record. So this is about annotating, right? This is about writing or typing somewhere uh, all the products. So in that system, you will be able to check into that. Salmi, could you please read number two? Hello, Salmi. I'm sorry, Sandra, I listen. Oh, okay. I'm no. sorry because my neighborhood has a party. Oh. Funny party. After the <laughs> class, we're going to be there. 
So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two, identify a stock location. Good. Is related to the classification, organization, the in, in the location. <laughs> That is it. I mean, it's exactly what you say is to identify where in the warehouse the products are going to be located, depending on many things, right? Good. Number three is going to be for a swing. Excuse me, teacher. Excuse me. Number three, okay. The regular and accurate stock count. What do you understand on that one, Osmin? Mm. No, I don't know, teacher. I and this woman had my clear idea. Okay, so in this case, do regular and accurate stock counts is something that we discussed yesterday. That is a cycle of counting. Some companies will discuss that they count one once or twice a year, but there are depending on the products that you sell. Sometimes you need to do it every week, every month anything like that right so counting inventory depending on the kind of product that you're selling it's important to have a cycle on that one good the order is number four okay number four combine sales and inventory data what do you understand on this one Um, for me, it's very important um, the manager of a storage or uh, the, the man in charge of a storage, um, he knows about uh, budget sales because it depends uh, how uh, how much inventory that he needs or he buy, buys or uh, buys uh, the the raw material. For example, in my company, I I require the budget sales uh, to the um to the customers because it depends if if the company uh, increase the invent the the uh -huh, or the sales uh, we need more inventory and for for that uh, for that reason is very important very good you are so right so it's a combination between the data i mean how can i explain this yeah it's, a, com yeah, it's a combination from uh, the people that has their forecast of selling and the people that has the manage of the inventory right i'm sorry about yes. that. yes yes okay so yes, that is uh, that is very important. So you can create a forecast and everything is combined in a way that everything is going to be uh, is going to be hand by hand and the production is going smoothly. Carla, number five. Create a portion process. It's very important that it's very important come with a uh, way of working for a uh, portions uh, product because it's the the best uh, ways to control that all process uh, can be complete very good so that is it so you need to create a purchasing process because you need to know how much material you are going to need, uh, what time is going to be requested to be delivered, what is the plan B in case the vendor does not deliver or does not have the material that we're looking to. So there is a process that needs to be done for us to, to have very clear everything here. Number six, uh, Rose. 
Number six, establish a method for markdowns. Okay, what do you understand of this? Markdown, what is markdown? Let me find what is markdown. Yeah, markdown is something that is uh, not correct that you need to improve. Uh, it's about also um, what you need to improve, that is it. Oh yeah, establish a method on. I understand. Establish a method for reduce cost. Maybe that is it. So, mm -hmm. so sometimes you are doing a very good job, but you can always improve. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. The company has to establish a method for reduce cost, reduce process. Maybe exactly that, so that uh, save money. That is true. So at the end, uh, you have a process, and you have somebody that audits that process. And then identify, you know what, we can we can improve this, change this, do something there, right? Good, Sandra, build, oh, well, number seven. Oh, we can't hear you, Sandra. Sorry. Will, I start the save it process. What do you understand on this one? Uh, I have, I have, uh, 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 out the, uh, for the, for the cells, uh, in, in the time, in the time, uh, uh, I will process uh, for maintenance, for my products or raw material in, uh, at the warehouse. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is built a stock receiving process. So when you are receiving any materials or when you are sending the stock to other departments, you need to know the procedure, how it's going to be, not only because of the time, but also because of the quality of all the products. So you need to, to know that one, right? Good, number eight, uh, Adrian. Okay, teacher, number, number eight, create a system for return. And what? In that case, when the, the customer um, return the product or, or another another um, another uh, <laughs> um, another product, another raw materials um, is is very important. Is that um, May or we have a process or procedures um, for um, the for 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 the best operation. Maybe is for the pollution. That is it. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is it. So you need to create a system for returns. And that is very important because you need to understand why a customer is returning something, right? The reason why and what you are going to do about this. For example, with computers, what the companies do is that they sell them as refurbished. So they put everything as brand new, but it's not brand new. Somebody used that one day, one week, one month. So uh, they refurbish everything, put everything together, but they sell it at a lower price. So that's what happens sometimes. Uh, uh, what's the returns, teacher? System for returns. Uh, it means that uh, when, when your company sells a product and the customer comes back to you and says, I don't want the product. Here is it. I want my money back. Good. Number nine is for Mayra. Okay. <clears throat> Number nine, determine a dead stock procedure. What do you understand on this? For me, in this point, uh, it's important to have a process 
that identifies uh, the expiration date of the products. And for example, uh, we can determine when we can put the products in sales uh, to remove the inventory um, to um, prevent. Prevent. To prevent um, the death of the product. Very good, perfect. Yeah, that will be it about that one. So there are some products that are going to, they need, you need to move them very quickly. Sometimes mm -hmm. also this is related to um, inventory that is not moving, right? So inventory that exactly. because of many reasons you're not selling those and you need to, to know what you're gonna do. Okay, the last one, uh, number 10 is going to be for um, Guadalupe. Yes, pick your inventory KPLs. KPIs, what do you understand on that? Mm. Maybe you choose the, the, the best inventory for convenience. Well, actually this is about the KPIs. Do you remember or does anybody remember what is a KPI? Key performance indicators. Very good. It's a key performance indicator. And what is that for? The indicator related to the result. Very good. So it's to measure, right? What are the results on the rotation of the inventory, on the sales, uh, how fast you're doing some things, how good material we have, uh, the accuracy of the count inventory, things like that we can have into that. So those are like 10 uh, steps that you we can get into management whenever we're talking about inventory. Do you have any question about this? Was KPS teacher? KPI is key performance indicator. Okay. Good. Okay. So now uh, we have here types of inventory. So of course, the first one is raw materials. We need to know how many of any of these we receive, where we're going to build them. As you can see in the picture, it says gas. So sometimes there are some materials that are dangerous or need special handling. So that is also very important. The other one is components. What do you understand on, as components? maybe. Construction. Const uh, construction parts, what else? Carpenter. Mm. Small tools. Small tools. Okay. So there are many small things, not small, but things that are related to the warehouse for the maintenance and things like that. So it's going to be uh, parts or components related to, to this. That is different from, from the raw materials. We'll check already what is work in progress. So the most common name for that one is WIP, work in progress. Uh, there is always something like work in progress. Finished goods, uh, of course, you know what are those. Maintenance, repair, and operations. So the name of that one is also MRO. So maintenance, repair, and operation goods are things that you or the department in that area is going to use for, for everything to work perfectly whenever you are producing something. Packing and packaging material. So those are also very important. What is the difference about packing and packaging materials, you know? Okay, packing are like the things where you put inside things, for example, a box, a bag, anything like that. And packaging is like, material that you use to, to pack the products. For example, uh, masking tape 
or um, I don't know, it could be glue or any other what do, thing. What do you say, armar? Armar. Uh, arm. You can say arm. Arm. Does it packing is arm? The packing is like the box itself or anything that is good you are going to put inside that one. And packaging are the the materials, the items that you use to finish the packing. I this I this raw material building uh, something to finish the just the packing, just the packing. So this is just related for the packaging. Okay, the next one, it says safety stock and anticipation stock. Ah, what is this? Do you know what is safety stock and anticipation stock that are very similar actually? Mm -hmm. I think that Hmm. The stock that you already have at the warehouse. That's the anticipation stuff is the the stock that you or you are oh my god um it's going to arrive in a moment I think. Okay, I think. they are very similar actually. Safety stock is I mean for example in mind that uh, that the productions they uh, created a hundred products and you are going to keep something in your stock just in case you need something. Sometimes what happens is that you have different stores. You have one store in Chalchuapa, one store in San Salvador, one store in San Miguel. And then uh, you keep some safety stock in your warehouse in case any store is out of stock. So you can send Reserve? that immediately. I'm sorry? Reserve for the store? Yeah, it's like a reserve uh, for you to manage any problem that may come. So do you remember that here in, in logistics, we need to be ready with a plan B, right? In case something happens. And anticipation stock is something that they do also in inventory. For example, in mind that the sales department says- we Emergency. Need is, emergency. That is the safety stock, emergency. The anticipation is, imagine that um, the sales department says, we're going to sell a hundred products. So you and the production, um, the production or the operations team says, we're going to produce 110, just in case, right? In case they need more, we're going to have 10 more. Of course, you need to analyze how many you are going to have uh, as anticipated, or how much you are going to keep as a safety stock. It's not just a random number. You need to analyze this. Questions on this? Elabore, elabore, elabore more products? Yeah, they produce. Say? Yeah, they produce a little produce. bit more. Not that much. Remember what that it has uh -huh, a more? percentage. Good. Good. So the next one is decoupling inventory. Do you know what is that? Okay, this is uh, whenever you have products that are similar, what you usually do in this kind of inventory is that you take one from this, and one from this, or when they are almost the same, let's say. So you are selling one of these and one of these, one of these and one of these, one A and one B, one A and one B. So all the stock is selling in an organized way. So that, of I, course, that depends on the customer if they request A only. Uh, somebody was going organize, to- Organize and have a history last year. I would definitely, yeah, to have um, uh, the statistics on what happened last year is going to help you determine, yeah, what is going so to press, happen. Press, what to do you do say, presupuesto? In this case, it's forecast, to create a forecast. Forecast? Forecast, yeah. Depend forecast says yeah. uh, uh, to say last year. 
that is it. So that is something that some companies do very often, actually. The other one is cycle inventory. What is that? The rotation of the inventory? Yeah, that is just as simple as that one, right? Is the rotation. So we have, we need to determine what will be the best method, but you need to try to sell all the inventory, right? So that is the, okay. the purpose of this one. Service inventory, what is that? When the company eh, almacenar store, eh, uh -huh. when the company store the the raw material to the customer. Uh, well, something like that. Yes. Any other idea? In the service of the management, total. Of the management of total inventory. Ah, uh, yes. Total product. In Total product case, produced. Ah, uh, yes. In this case, it's more focused on in, in services. For example, the hotel, mm -hmm. that is a very nice ex example. Uh, you need to know how many rooms do you have available. Uh, if, for example, you are going to have um, a match, a soccer match, you need to know when it's going to be uh, in the city, I mean. And then you need to determine and be ready to have all the rooms available. So you need to check, it's not a good, but you need to in advance check what is going to happen. Be ready for that kind of situations. Good. Uh, any questions with the service inventory? Okay, the next one is transient inventory. What is that? The inventory that arrives in a moment, <laughs> in a month, in a week, I think. Yeah, that might be something like that. Yeah, so transient inventory is going to be oh. like, uh, or uh, it's related to two things actually. Uh, one is the inventory that is actually in transit in a, uh, in a truck or anything. Sometimes remember that it's going to take a while for you to deliver the inventory from, I mean, this country to the United States, for example, it's taking a while. And uh, the inventory about the, uh, the vehicles that you have available for you to move different mm, things. Okay. Yeah. Theoretical inventory, what is that? The theoretical inventory is is in data in the report. Very it's, good. Mm -hmm. This so, data you uh, compare with the the physical uh, inventory. That is it. So mm -hmm. according to the records, you say that you have a hundred of these, 200 of these, of course it's not physical, right? You need to go and count and check if they are there. But if your system is good, well, probably it's going to be there, everything that you need. Excess inventory, what is that? When a house uh, full? When you have more than you need, right? More inventory. Unnecessary. Yeah, so that is not good. So you need to move that inventory and sometimes you need to stop production, many other things that you need to do. So depending on that. No controlling, no controlling it uh, produce the elements in the, in the, in the store or? Well, this is just excess of inventory. So when you produce more than you need it, so, and there are many things that you can do for this one, but it's not good, definitely, because it's going to cause a cost in the warehouse. Good. So we have, this is a little process. This is kind of easy. 
Uh, so the first one is goods are delivered, right? So we know that the raw materials are delivered already, okay? They are in transit. Number two, goods are reviewed, sorted, and stored. So you receive the goods, you check the paper with the physical products. So that is very important. You review, not only count, you review that the quality is good, that is exactly what you requested. Then it says sorted. Do you know what is sorted? No stored, but sorted, sort. Sort, sort is when you, you put in order, I think. That is it, yeah. it's when you organize, right? You say yeah, this organize. goes here, this goes here, mm -hmm. and then you store, you move that to the warehouse. Very good. Number three says inventory levels are monitored. So you are going to monitor how much inventory you have in the different products. And this is something that you need to do very often. If it's possible every day, right? But sometimes it's not possible every day. As soon as possible, as often as possible. Then stock orders are placed. So this is when a customer comes and place an order, okay? Then a number five says stock orders are approved. So somebody requests, but we need to check if the inventory is available, the color, the sizes, anything like that. Goods are taken from stock. So now it starts the delivery, right? You Somebody goes and pick the finished goods from the from the warehouse. Inventory levels are updated. So this is when you scan the inventories out of the warehouse. And then low stock levels trigger purchase. So you start again. You request raw materials, packaging, materials, any other thing that you need for you to produce. Uh, this is quite simple, but I don't know if you have any questions about this process. Questions, questions, no questions. Teacher, your microphone is off. Hello, can you hear me? And your, micro your microphone is off. <laughs> So can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay, good, perfect. So this is inventory management techniques. It says inventory management is practice of tracking and controlling inventory orders. It's usage and storage along with management or finished goods that are ready for sale. And we're going to check some techniques in this one. Let's see. We're going to start now with Michelle. Could you please read the first one? Okay, ABC analysis. Yes, please. Okay. Here inventory items are classified into three categories, namely A, high, highly ex expensive, B, more moderately expensive, and C, least expensive. Okay, so this is the first technique of management on inventory. So we separate the items in three categories. The highly expensive, so the most expensive, moderately expensive, and the least expensive. That is going to be the other one. So for you to manage and handle all. This is like not only for three kinds of products. You can use this for many kinds of products, but you have like A, B, C. You can say other, I mean, you can have A, B, C, D, E, or any, depending on, on the products that you're selling, of course. Good, uh, let's see, lower this, could you please read the next one? Okay, A M R P. Hey, no, it's just in time, it's the second one. Second one, 
What it says in um, this method. Sorry, now. sorry, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Just in time. In this method, the company keeps only that much of inventory which is needed during production. This saves insurance and stretch cost. Very good. So this is another technique. So in this one, uh, the company has only the inventory needed during production. So I mean, it means that you produce and you move out, you send back. So you are going to avoid having a lot of products in your warehouse. So many companies, they, they do that one, they just in time. And uh, it's a very good thing because, I mean, you need to be very fast, but you don't have to have a lot of things there in the warehouse. So that's why this is good. Okay, uh, the next one is going to be for Pamela. Hello, Pamela. Not possible. Jancy, please help us with MRP. MRP. Material for equipment planning. Is a technique in which other in places after considering self forecast. Okay, so this is a mature requirement planning and it's a technique in which order is placed after considering sales forecast. So that means that for first of all, we need to be sure that we are going to sell, sell this and when a customer requests, then we can produce. Before that one is not possible. Uh, this is not that common, that depends on the production, but yeah, it's a technique that we can use on this. Zulma, could you please read the next? Hello, Zulma. Hello. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. Okay. EOQ model. In this model, the store management will record the inventory when it's reached the minimum level. That is it. So in this one, uh, it says that the store manager will reorder the inventory when it reaches the minimal level. This is very similar to the just-in-time. The difference is that in the economic, this is the economic of quantity model, uh, you are going to have a, a small warehouse and then you are going to, to have a minimal that you have to reach. You cannot request more raw material or more things for you to put in the warehouse until you reach that minimal percentage so that is the difference and in the just in time maybe we don't have anything because we send everything that is the main difference okay the next one is for Ada Patricia okay mean safety stock is the level of inventory which an organization maintains to avoid the stock out situation very good. So this is the minimal safety of stock. It is the level of inventory which an organization maintains to avoid the stock out situation. So this is like uh, when, when we don't want to have a lot of uh, stock, but we need to know what will be the, the minimal on that one. So there is like a variance, you know, we, we can have between this and this other. So not that much, but we have like a, a gap for us to fill with stock. That will be it. Okay, the next one is for Susana. Hello, Susana. Not possible. Okay, let's see. Well, Lupe, could you please help us? Yes, teacher. Um, uh, 
Mm -hmm. is vital, vital essential. Is is a method. I know, vital essential, um, VED analyzer. Vital an analysis. Uh, vital, vital essential in the cellular vent mm -hmm. is used for controlling the spare part on the of the inventory. Okay, so this is the vital, essential, and desirable. So that means that it's going to have only what is really important, only the amount of product that we really need to have. And we need to control that everything is the most accurate possible. So that is it, it's not that complicated. The last one is for floor. Could you please help us floor with this one? Okay, FSM method. Fast, slow, and no moving FSM method is very use, useful for controlling obsolescence. Obsolescence, yeah. So in this, in this case, we are going to try to move out the stock from the warehouse, the products that are the older, the oldest that we created. There are other techniques. For example, do you remember the FIFO, right? First in, first out. And the LIFO that is last in, first out. So there are two other that are very common. This is just an example of some techniques that we can use for inventory management. Uh, but of course, what is the most important is to, to analyze your product, to understand and check what will be the best option for you. Of course, you can always change or you can always combine some techniques so you have better results. Very good. Questions, any questions? No questions. Very interesting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is something that I found very interesting. There were more, but I, I know that sometimes we need to present just the most basic things. Okay, we're going to check the attendance and then we are going to watch some videos. So, Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Good. Anna Selmi Chavez. Thank you, Chair. Good. good. Present. Okay, good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present teacher. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present teacher. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solorzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sanchez Ramirez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Siraeta. Okay, so we're going to continue. Uh, we are almost everybody's here. That's good. We're going to see some videos, of course, as usual, we're going to see, and then we're going to get some feedback or anything like that. Comments. Oh, I didn't do what I have to do. Hold on a second. 
he needs to be here and then here. Okay, so this is about inventory control methods. Let's listen and then provide feedback or comments on what you understood on the video. Here we go. Hello, it's Michael from Corona, and we're back to talk inventory today. The modern POS has quickly revolutionized retail inventory management. The days of manually entering numbers into a spreadsheet or ledger book are hopefully gone. These new inventory control methods have allowed retailers to more easily sell products on multiple channels, manage their warehouse space, carry more products, communicate with vendors, keep shelves stocked, and much more. While the industry has evolved rapidly, there are still many retailers that have not yet adopted these powerful new techniques. So if you find yourself in that group, it's worth thinking about making a change to your system. The best place to get started is with your inventory control methods. Your inventory control is the process of keeping in-depth track of all products in your catalog. By doing it well, you'll ensure that your business is correctly ordering, stocking, pricing, and tracking your entire inventory. On its most basic level, inventory control is meant to make sure that your shelves are always adequately stocked, but yet your warehouse or storage area isn't overstocked. You should know exactly where your inventory is and how much you have at any moment. There are many different ways of measuring and managing your inventory. Most retail businesses employ several depending on the type of inventory. These methods are generated and managed by your inventory management, which is typically built into your retail point of sale system. Now, a retail POS keeps all product data in one system, so it can provide you with valuable reports and actionable advice to help you make better business decisions. Proper inventory control is so important because if you run out of stock for a certain item, you'll face a two-fold problem. Of course, you'll lose sales because you don't have the product on your shelves. Even worse though, you'll likely lose customers, shoppers who can't buy an item they came to your store for are probably going to shop elsewhere. This long-term cost can have calamitous effects on your small business. Likewise, it's equally poor for businesses if you are overstocked on a certain item. Though it offers less of a direct cost to the business, its eventual consequences are the same. Carrying too much ties up your business's cash flow and also takes up valuable storage space. Both scenarios prevent you from being able to spend the money elsewhere. No cash means no capital to order more products, and no space means no room to hold any of the new products. So with proper inventory control, methods, you'll see several important changes in your business. First, more sales. People want their retailers to have products in stock and available for purchase. We also see better shopper loyalty. Don't let a poor experience drive a customer away from your business. Storage efficiency will improve too. You can keep optimal stock levels in your warehouse so that you can add new products when you need them. Finally, you'll have less retail waste. With better inventory efficiency, you'll minimize your retail waste, saving both your wallet and the environment. Now, your retail inventory management is truly at the heart of your entire business operations. If it's not controlled effectively, you're going to see consequences immediately and in many areas of your business. But when it's done right, you'll see your business improve in ways that you never imagined. So what are some of the best inventory control methods for small businesses? I wanted to quickly go over 11 of the most important that our customers commonly use. So number one, ABC Retail Analytics. ABC analysis breaks down your entire inventory catalog item by item. In doing so, it assigns a letter grade, a B or C, to each item based on its revenue and profitability. The grade allows you to quickly identify which products are doing well and which need a change. This can help with your pricing strategies and marketing efforts. Even better, your POS can grade your inventory and produce a detailed report in just 15 seconds. Second just-in-time inventory control. This method is often just shorted to JIT, and it lessens the amount of inventory that a business has on hand at any given time. Instead, it tries to order products as needed, waiting until the last minute to receive new inventory. This keeps storage space and cash flow at healthy levels. This method won't work for all retailers, especially if your delivery times are lengthy or you have large swings in in-store traffic, but it's a popular option for businesses that manufacture some or all of their products. Okay, number three, economic order quantities. Also commonly shortened EOQs try to find the perfect balance between going out of stock and being overstocked. The formula for implementing EOQ control is hard to devise and based on a number of factors, including cost of production, rate of demand, annual sales, ordering costs, carrying or storage costs, and order quantity. Fourth, choose custom PAR levels. Setting custom PAR levels in your POS system's inventory control software allows you to get notifications for each stock item when they hit a certain level. This level will be different for each of your products. Spend some time trying to determine a smart level for each item based on a number of factors like how long it takes to sell, order, pending duration, delivery time, case size, and minimum order. This inventory control technique does require some time and effort up front, but it'll pay off in the long run. The PAR levels can be set and all future ordering will be automated. Next, FIFO and LIFO. A few of the more common inventory control methods you might have already heard of, first in, first out, and last in, first out are popular costing methods for retailers. 
They differ in how to calculate sales against cost though. FIFO measures the sales against the cost of the longest standing order in the store, while LIFO calculates the cost of the sale against the cost of the most recent order. Each costing method has different merits, though most retailers are likely to rely on the FIFO method. Sixth, vendor relationship management and auto ordering. It's important to maintain a healthy relationship with all vendors. Late orders, missed payments, or other frustrating behavior can strain your vendor relations and hurt your business. Having your vendor relations built into your POS software makes this much easier and pain-free. You can set stock notifications to alert you to place an order, or just have your POS do it for you with automated ordering. Okay, number seven, demand forecasting. Look at reporting and analytics from prior years to get an idea of when your slow and busy times are. For most retailers, a typical July order is very different from one in December. You must be able to anticipate a predicted amount that you'll sell. It's impossible to do so perfectly, but ballparking a range will help prevent against catastrophic miscalculations. Eighth, minimum order quantity. Many suppliers and vendors set minimum order standards for each item that they carry. This helps them keep the cost down when merchants order products wholesale, but means that business owners must order a certain amount each time. Typically, more inexpensive items will have a higher minimum order quantity. Again, this allows wholesale merchants to sell items at a cheaper rate, which is of course an advantage to the retailer, but it's important to be careful not to over order and leave your store with a stock surplus. Ninth on the list, safety stock ordering. This technique involves carrying a bit more stock than you might anticipate selling through. This is commonly used to protect against stockouts and is a great strategy for retailers that have a bit of extra space and cash on hand. It's also wise if you have issues with an unreliable vendor, uncertainty of future availability of a certain product, or an unpredictable season approaching. Ideally, you don't ever want to over order and your point of sale inventory management is meant to protect you against this. But there are times when it does make sense. Tenth, perpetual counting. This counting method allows you to keep track of your inventory throughout the year instead of doing it just once at the end of the year. Many retailers still rely on a single year-end count. If there are large discrepancies at this point, there's nothing that can be done to fix it. Instead, perpetual counts keep you up to date on your inventory throughout the year. You can choose which products you want counted each day and come up with a manageable schedule. This helps identify loss or theft issues and keeps your inventory safe. Finally, number 11, drop shipping inventory. Dropshipping cuts you out of the inventory and delivery equation entirely. You simply serve as the facilitator of the transaction while the product is shipped from a manufacturer or wholesaler directly to the customer. Arguably, since you don't even have to deal with the inventory, this is the most efficient system of them all. Your POS inventory management system will make all of these so much easier. You'll be able to come up with custom ways of measuring your inventory catalog that'll give you great perspective on your store and help you continue to succeed and expand. Now, for more inventory tips, subscribe to our blog and channel. And to see how Corona's inventory management works, set up a free trial. There are zero commitments, and you can take your time getting to know and understand the software before you even make a purchase. Our product specialist will walk you through the entire set of inventory features, and you can even upload your own business's data to see exactly how your reporting and analytics will work. Keep tuned in for our next video, and thanks for watching. Good. It was very clear, right? everything so the question is what did you understand this uh -huh. in summary teacher he explained about the different system of the control of inventory very good techniques, right? Uh, some of those, mm -hmm. we checked them already in the slide that we were checking at last. And uh, some of those we mentioned before, some of those they didn't, it was brand new. So um, anybody else, any other comments? In a few words, somebody, in a, okay, no. No, speak you. Okay, in this case, I think the, the when you explain a process is, o sea, you listen, it's very easy, but, uh, but it's really complicated. Organize everything steps for, for make a, a good process, a good product. That is true. So it's very easy sometimes to, to explain but to do things is so totally complicated good anybody else is rose you were going to say something in a few words he explains all the methods that you present us and i understand 
he speaks very fast. <laughs> I like it. But I only understand that he mentioned that overstock hurts the finance of the company. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's 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 a good reason. That's a good uh, observation. Very good. Yeah, actually, what you say is very true. He speaks very fast. Yeah. And let me tell you that that is the normal way of speaking of America. Not everybody speaks like that. But whenever you go to New York, I know that you are going to finish the course and you are going to go to New York. You are going to find people speaking like that. So fluency is not only by speaking, but also by listening. So try to understand probably not every word, but the general idea on what they are saying is important. So fluency is in both ways, the ways that you speak and the way that you understand somebody that is speaking fast. So this guy here, he speaks, he spoke very fast, very, very nice. And uh, it was very clear actually for yeah. some other people you don't understand the words. Sometimes they speak that well, whatever you want to say. We'll see what the yeah, but are. yeah, he speaks very clear, but so fast. <laughs> that is Wait it. a moment, please. <laughs> Wait a moment. What do you say? <laughs> what do you say? Wait a moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's a good exercise that you can do. I mean, you can, for example, in this kind of exercise, if you go here to the settings, you are going to be able to oh, yeah. check the, the speed, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The speed or the or the subtitles so it's going to be easy but it's good for you to also understand in a fast way any other comment before we move on okay so now we're going to see a second video about inventory inventory management best practices okay so let's pay attention and then we're going to discuss provide comments about this one Hello and welcome to our presentation on improving inventory management. Managing inventory correctly can result in better margins, an organized sales process, and a healthier business overall. Everything in this presentation and more can be found in the Complete Inventory Management Guide from Reliant Funding, which we'll link to in the description. Let's get started. In the short course, we will cover why inventory management is so important to get right. Lesson two will be an overview of inventory management tactics. Again, the full guide will have a bit more depth, but we can cover the basics. How to create an inventory ledger and what formulas to use in your process will be covered in lessons three. And for four and five, you will get some tools for selling and controlling your stock, as well as tools for auditing your inventory. There are some staggering statistics about inventory that would make any warehouse manager take a second look at their own stock levels. By avoiding becoming a statistic, businesses can show improved accuracy and organized warehouse, see repeat customers, higher revenues, and more business benefits. By even using item level tagging, inventory accuracy can be boosted by 32%. Well, we've already covered lesson one, why inventory management is so important. Now on to lesson two, an overview of inventory management tactics. There are many inventory management tactics that any business owner can use to properly manage their inventory and as a result, their margins. ABC analysis is a categorization method where A items are the most valuable and C the least valuable. This helps to focus attention to A items. Setting PAR levels work hand in hand with the categorization method because by setting the minimum number of products to have on hand for each item, it will make it easier to decide when to order more. FIFO and LIFO stand for first in, first out, and last in, first out. FIFO is when the stock that came in first is sold first. It is mostly used in grocery or restaurant businesses that stock perishable items. Last in, first out, or LIFO, is used when businesses assume 
that their inventory costs will increase over time and prices will inflate. Managing relationships is a tactic that focuses on the relationship a business has with its supplier. Often, if you are clear, open, proactive, and engaging with a supplier, a business can benefit in a variety of different ways. For example, if a supplier is ever getting low on an item, they might inform their best accounts before sending out a public notice that those items are out of stock. A contingency plan for some is not a tactic, but a part of their workflow. The types of contingencies you must be prepared for are if you oversell your stock due to a spike in demand, if you don't have enough money to purchase the inventory you need, or other scenarios of the like. Auditing is another tactic that is often just part of the process for some businesses. If it isn't yet part of your business, consider it. There are software tools that you might use to tell you how much you have in stock. Auditing can help you verify systems are all working properly and no careless mistakes are being made. Forecasting is the last tactic we recommend every business owner to consider adding to their inventory repertoire. Now that we have overviewed all inventory tactics available, let's review how to create an inventory ledger and some helpful inventory formulas. There are many ways to create a ledger, but some main pieces of information that almost every inventory ledger should include are the sale purchase date, product name or item number, quantity, price, transaction description, amount paid, price paid, and amount owed. If you were hoping for a template, you can find one in the complete inventory guide available at reliantfunding.com slash inventory dash management dash guide. The main formulas to use in inventory management include economic order quantity or EOQ. This is the optimum number of inventory items you should purchase to minimize the total cost of ordering. The next is days inventory outstanding or DIO, which is the formula used to calculate the number of days it takes for inventory to turn into sales. The safety stock formula is used to calculate the amount of stock you should keep in your safety so you never run out. Lead time demand is an easy calculation that is just lead time times average daily sales. Reorder point helps to determine when to order more inventory. This is a simple addition of lead time demand and safety stock. For more information and the visual formulas to calculate these values, download your inventory guide copy today. Math can be overwhelming, but rest assured, we have made it visually easy in our inventory guide. Let's talk about where a lot of businesses have their largest challenge when dealing with inventory, selling old inventory and controlling stock. There are multiple ways to sell old inventory to make sure your business is not taking large losses at every corner. Remarketing is a clever approach where you find a new way for consumers to view the value of your product or products. According to Christine Guillot, a retail profit expert, expose your products to the customer more than once during their experience. Sometimes people need to see something a couple of times to notice them. Discounting, bundling items, and freebies are also great ways to move your inventory off of your shelf. There are customers who wait specifically for inventory to go old to take advantage of retailers using these tactics. Restaurants can also put inventory that needs to be used into a delicious special for customers to fill their appetites with. Controlling your stock, on the other hand, requires first that a business owner decide who will be holding the inventory. Will it be an in-house team or a drop shipping option that makes more sense? An in-house team can allow for close control over products, customer service issues can be easily resolved, and your team understands your products better than anyone. The disadvantages for using an in-house team are bearing the upfront costs of hours and space. Using a drop shipper brings a lower upfront investment. It also lowers overhead costs associated with managing a warehouse of stock. You can do business from anywhere there's an internet connection and scaling a growing business with inventory might be easier this way. The disadvantages, however, are that the dropshipping vertical is highly competitive and produces lower margins for business owners. 
Inventory has the possibility of changing daily and there's a chance that shipping complexities become present. With less control, mistakes can be made, which affects the business's reputation. We have reviewed a lot during this presentation, why inventory management is so important, an overview of tactics, how to create an inventory ledger, formulas, and selling and controlling your stock. Some may say that auditing tells you if the inventory strategies you implement are working or not. Let's go over that in our last lesson. Inventory audit is the process of assessing stocks that are on the books against the physical stocks in a warehouse. In order to conduct a proper audit, first, do a physical inventory count. That just means counting each product in your inventory one by one. Then, a freight cost analysis should be done if you're shipping products. The overhead analysis is optional, but it determines the various other costs that contribute to overall inventory costs, like electricity or rent. Cycle counting is an audit tactic to use if you have a large inventory. Using this tactic means that you start counting a small part of your inventory every day, and over a period of time, the entire inventory count is completed. Spot check auditing is choosing a product and periodically checking the stock throughout the year to make sure that it's never too far off base from what your records show. There are many tools that can help you track your inventory and perform an audit. A point of sale or POS system is most popular. Using barcode labels is almost essential. Did you know that a person will make at least one data entry mistake for every 250 keystrokes? To avoid mistakes like this, try using barcode labels on your inventory if you were not already. Apps like Unleashed, Zoho Inventory, and CIN7 are also helpful when auditing your stock. We hope that you enjoyed this overview of inventory management from Reliant Funding. You can find more detail on topics that were covered and related links in the full inventory guide available for download at www.reliantfunding.com slash inventory dash management dash guide. As always, what did you understand on this one? This was a little bit different, right? So what did you get on this one? In a few words, it's like, a, I think that it's like a course, 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 yes. She explained, she understand at the, at the beginning that she explained what is an inventory management or why uh, inventory management, management is important. And he, she mentioned, mentioned that um, most, no, or a small part of the American people uh, um, do the, do the, um, no, no. Most of the American people don't track the inventory. They usually uh, uh, do manually. I understand at the beginning. And then uh, she was explaining all the stage of the, of the, uh, of the curse, because it's a curse, yes. And she explained what is inventory, uh, the different types of form formulas. Yeah, formulas. She mentioned formulas. All the, all the, the last, uh, the preview uh, method I say that you share with us. She mentioned that were that are formulas. Mm, but mm, she mentioned also um, the different types of um, how, how to, oh my God, how, how can you manage the inventory? For example, the FIFO, the LIFO, the first, first in, first out, and la, the last in, first out is the LIFO, no? That's it. Yeah, she speak many things, but I understand <laughs> only that. Oh, that was a lot, actually. Yeah, this is like a, an express course, you know. It's very good because it's going to show you everything, right? And it's just in 10 minutes. I mean, 
it's not that easy to to comply all of the things in just a video of 10 minutes, but it was very interesting. Any other comment? Nobody else's. Nobody knows it, but you got a secret smile. And you Hello, teacher. Hello, Osmin. How are you? I'm fine. Yes, uh, I only understand the uh, uh, is uh, is the course in online uh, five step for uh, the important is inventory management. Only that is okay. Good, perfect. Thank you, Osmin. Yeah. Anybody else is. Nothing else? Okay, so today we're going to repeat an activity that we did a few days ago. So please take some paper and pencil and I'm going to do a little dictation. Let's see how it goes, okay? I will okay. give you a few minutes for you to be ready. Remember that I'm going to read the punctuation, like comma, period, semicolon, okay? And I will say period and a part when you need to move on to other paragraph, okay? And that's it. Is everybody ready? Yes, teacher. Good, good. I'm going to repeat and uh, you can ask me to spell, of course. So here we go. In March, comma, in March, comma, thousands, thousands of sea turtles, thousands of sea turtles, Thousands of sea turtles come to a beach. Come to a beach in eastern India. In eastern India. In eastern India. Period. They lay eggs. They lay eggs. They lay eggs in the sand. In the sand. Period. One and a half. One and a half months later, one and a half months later, comma, the small baby turtles, the small baby turtles, the small baby turtles come out, come out from the sun, from the sand, from the sand, period. They want to get to the sea. They want to get to the sea. They want to get to the sea, period. 
they know they know where the sea is they know where the sea is period and apart however comma however it is a dangerous way it is a dangerous way it is a dangerous way teacher sorry no vemos la lectura es dictado tiene que di okay. escribirla it's great okay thank you yeah it is a dangerous way it is a dangerous way period some animals some animals and birds some animals and birds wait for this special mm -hmm. moment wait for this special moment some animals and birds wait for this special moment period they want to eat they want to eat the baby turtles the baby turtles period many turtles many turtles do not get do not get to the sea to the sea period this kind of turtle this kind of turtle this kind of turtle has a green shell has a green shell has a green shell period it is the smallest it is the smallest it is the smallest sea turtle sea turtle period it lives it lives in tropical oceans it lives in tropical oceans it lives in tropical oceans period in the past in the past comma in the past comma people kill this turtle people kill this turtle people kill this turtle period people eat turtle meat people eat turtle meat 
people eat turtle meat. Period. They use its skin. They use its skin. They use its skin. Comma. Two. Period. Comma two period. Now, comma. Now, comma. There are rules. There are rules. Period. Okay, this is the end, and I'm going to read all the paragraph. Okay, so you can check if you have to change something. Here we go. In March, thousands of sea turtles come to a beach in Eastern India. They lay eggs in the sand. One and a half months later, the small baby turtles come out from the sand. They want to get to the sea. They know where the sea is. However, it is a dangerous way. Some animals and birds wait for this special moment. They want to eat the baby turtles. Many turtles do not get to the sea. This kind of turtle has a green shell. It is the smallest sea turtle. It lives in, a tropical, in tropical oceans. In the past, people killed this turtle. People eat turtle meat. They use its skin too. Now there are rules. Good. I believe it was kind of easy, but let's see what happens, okay? I'm going to show you the paragraph so you can correct yourself. And this is it. So as you can see there, it says in March, thousands of sea turtles come to a beach in Eastern India. They lay eggs in the sand. One and a half months later, the small baby turtles come out from the sand. They want to get to the sea. They know where the sea is. However, it is a dangerous way. Some animals and birds wait for this special moment. They want to eat the baby turtles. Many turtles do not get to the sea. This kind of turtle has a green shell. It is the smallest sea turtle. It lives in tropical oceans. In the past, people killed this turtle. People eat turtle meat. They use its skin too. Now, there are rules. Okay, so please try to correct the mistakes. You can circle it or underline and check how many mistakes you made. Okay, have you finished the check? Do you need more time? Okay, a question for everybody. Did somebody make the dictation perfect? No mistakes? Okay, five or less mistakes. 
Me, teacher, only two. Okay, two is very good. Anybody yes, else? teacher, me. Very good. I write shit to help. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> okay. and, I, and when you say it lives, I uh -huh. write it lives. Uh -huh. yes. yes, me too. Cool. It <laughs> lives. <laughs> it lives. No, it lives. It lives. It lives. Uh -huh. Yes, me too. This is my work. Yeah. This, my those are ego. those are my. <laughs> yes, so do I. Okay, very good. Perfect. That is nice. Okay, who has ten mistakes or less? Me, teacher. Very good. That's good. Anybody else's? Okay, sometimes what happens? Okay, very good. In this kind of activities, I mean, I try to find uh, a reading that is not that complicated, but has words that are not that common. For example, turtles are not that common, but I guess you understood what it is about, right? Eastern is not that common. Lay X is not that common. Uh, I don't know, meat is kind of common, but not that much. Uh, sometimes what happens is that there are words that we don't know. Or another thing that happens also is that there are words that we know, but we don't remember how it's written. Or sometimes what happens is exactly what, what, you, what happens to you, where it says it lives in tropical oceans. So in this case, sometimes there are words that are similar or they have exactly the same uh, pronunciation. So in this kind of situations, you need to read the whole sentence. It lives in tropical oceans. So it lives or it leaves. Ah, in that case, you can decide what word is better for you. So you can reaccommodate that one, of course. Um, of course, it's a good exercise, but um, I know that it's difficult just to listen and, and try to write the words correctly, right? So, but it was a very good. Um, okay. Any I, any questions? Uh -huh. any I comments? was dubbing. I was dubbing when you say they lay, they lay, 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 lay eggs. Uh huh. Yeah, my and I say lay, lay is when you you put um uh, relax. Ah, <laughs> uh, lay down. Yeah, I uh -huh, lay down, and I say lay, mm. <laughs> and I I write lay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah, associate you... that the thing that you say, you have to associate <laughs> the, the complete sentence. That is true. In that case, it lives, uh -huh, it lives in tropical ocean. It, no, uh -huh, it lives, uh -huh, yeah. You have, yeah. You have uh, a, good, a good tip. <laughs> yeah, you know, that happens sometimes. And it's going to help you even when you do some tests or anything like that you are going to be able to understand and choose the correct options. So that, that are good. Those are good. Sandy. Any other questions uh, about a word, pronunciation, or any comment? Okay. So I have another activity. This is uh, another video, but this is totally different from the ones we have checked until now. Uh, this is a very nice video that actually my son um, shows to me. Let me just check if you will be able to. Yeah, you will be able to see it. Okay. So what we're going to do uh, is a very short video. It's only seven minutes, but it's a very nice one. Uh, well, it's in Spanish. I don't know. No, I guess it's in English. Let me just check. Hold on a second. Uh, is for us to analyze. It's a story, you know, that nobody knows the truth about this one. But let me just check, hold on a second. Yeah, it's in English. Okay, wait, okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you the video and then we can comment, okay? It's not related with inventory or logistics or anything like that, but it's a nice video. It's from a channel, uh, in Germany, but the, the video is in English. And you know, my son, he always, he, he loves to, to check about science and things like that. And we always see things like this kind of video, but this is a, a, 
a different video. So let's let's watch this better. Here we go. You were on your way home when you died. Tickety remarkable, but fatal nonetheless. Best to save you, but to no avail. Your body was... And that's when you met me. You died, I said, matter-of-factly. Was... There was a truck, and it was skidding. I died. Yes. But don't feel bad about it. Everyone dies. You looked around. There was... What is this place? Is this the afterlife? More or less. Are you God? Yes, I'm God. My kids, my wife. What about them? Will they be all right? That's what I like to see, I said. You just died and your main concern is for your family. That's good stuff right there. You looked at me with fascination. To you, I didn't look like God. I just looked like some man or possibly a woman. Some vague authority figure, maybe. Don't worry, I said. They'll be fine. You're... They didn't have time to grow contemptuous of you. Your wife will cry on the outside, but will be secretly relieved. To be fair, your marriage was falling apart. If it's any consolation, she'll feel very guilty for feeling relieved. Oh, so what happens now? Do I go to heaven or hell or something? Neither. You'll be reincarnated. Ah. So the Hindus were right. All religions are right in their own way. You followed along as we strode through the void. Where are we going? Nowhere in particular. It's just nice to walk while we talk. So, what's the point then? When I get reborn, I'll just be a blank slate, right? A baby. So, all my experiences and everything, everything I did in this life, won't matter. You, all the knowledge and experiences of all your past lives. You just don't remember them right now. I stopped walking and took you by the shoulders. Your soul is more magnificent, beautiful. A human mind can only contain a tiny fraction of what you are. It's like sticking your finger in a glass of water to see if it's hot or cold. You put a tiny part of yourself into the vessel, and when you bring it back out, you've been in a human for the last 48 years, so you haven't stretched out yet and felt the rest of your immense consciousness, remembering everything. But there's no point to doing that between each life. How many times have I been reincarnated then? Oh, lots. Lots and lots. And into lots of different lives. This time around, you'll be a Chinese peasant girl in 540 AD. Wait, what? You're sending me back in time? Well, I guess, technically, time as you know it only exists in your universe. Things are different where I come from. Where, where you come from? Oh, sure. I come from somewhere. I know you'll want to know what it's like there, but honestly, you wouldn't understand. Oh, you said, a little let down. But wait, if I get reincarnated to other places in time, I could have interacted with myself at some point. Sure, happens all the time. And with both lives only aware of their own lifespan, you don't even know it's happening. So, what's the point of it all? I looked you in the eye. The meaning of life, the reason I... You mean mankind? You want us to mature? No, just you. I may grow and mature and become a larger and greater intellect. Just me? What about everyone else? There is no one else. In this universe, dared blankly at me. But all the people on Earth. All you. Different incarnations of you. Wait, I'm everyone. Now you're guessing it. I'm every human being who ever lived. Yes. I'm Abraham Lincoln. And you're John Wilkes Booth, too. I'm a Hitler. You said, appalled, and you're the millions he killed. I'm Jesus, and you're everyone who followed him. You victimized someone, you were victimizing yourself. Every act of kindness you've done, you've done to yourself. 
every happy and sad moment ever experienced by any human was or will be experienced by you. You thought for a long time. Why? Why do all this? Because someday you will become like me. Because that's what you are. You're one of my kind. You're my child. Wow, you said incredulous. You mean, I'm a god? No, not yet. You're a fetus. You're still growing. Once you've lived every human life throughout all time, you, so the whole universe, it's just... An egg, I answered. Now it's time for you to move... Okay, what did you understand in this one? The moment when the, the argument found with God uh, after he died. died. And uh -huh. The moment when he uh, explained what is the importance of the life what is the the sense of the life very good nice perfect anybody else's my god uh, it remembered me remind me or remember remind me reminds me yeah it reminds me the movie soul yeah yeah, yeah. When he died and he he went to the to the my God <laughs> to the sky <laughs> and he asked what happened to me and he explained maybe he he has another lives lives mm -hmm. and I like it when he say um if you are kindly uh, with the other people, you receive kindly, low, uh, and at the end, oh, it was many things, but at the end, I understand that he come back to the earth in another egg to continue, to continue, to continue maybe, the lesson that he doesn't uh, learn in the life that he has, he is going to he's going to to burn again, I think. Yeah, that is it. Good, perfect. Anybody else? Has any other comments? Yes, I think the video talks about reincarnation or the return to the earth, like some Rosalina said. Mm -hmm. And it shows that all the activities uh, that we do when we are uh, in the earth, um, uh, other things that the video show is uh, when we died, God show all the things and exist other opportunity to return to the earth. Okay. And the end of the times, all, all, the, all these opportunities, uh, these opportunities permit us uh, to grow and learn um, and learn uh, to I, I think that these opportunities to permit us to will be a better person okay very good perfect nice anybody else's OK, 
Okay, uh, you know what I liked a lot about this video? Uh, I mean, the, the idea of reincarnation is something that some people has discussed in the past in many ways, right? But what I really liked about this video is that there is a moment when he says, okay, you need to go back to, to the earth, right? And you are going to be in the 400 year, you will be a woman. And he said, wait, am I going back in time? And he says, yeah, because time is something that you have in, in the world. I mean, but here there is no time, right? And he says, ah, but then if I go back in time, maybe sometime I encounter myself with me, right? And the other says, all the time. And he says, oh, how, how is that possible? And the other, the God says, because this in this universe is just you and you need to improve, right? You need to grow. And he says, no, mankind, everybody. And he says, there is no everybody. It's just you. And uh, he says, so I am everybody. And he says, yeah, you are every single person that have existed is you. And then he remembers, right? He says, so whenever, any time that I made something bad to somebody else, I did it to myself. And when I did something good, I did it to myself. And actually, I believe that. I believe that maybe not in reincarnation and all those things, but we, I believe that we are connected, right? I mean, if you see in the pandemic, a Chinese guy ate a soup, a bad soup in the other side of the world. And we're here, dying, suffering. So even a little thing that other people does in the other side of the world can affect our world. And that is a good reason why we need to do the world a better place to help whenever we have the chance. Uh, to avoid harming people. It's not a good idea to hurt somebody else's. So that's what I really liked about the video. I know that reincarnation is something that maybe you don't believe, but yes, we are connected. We are connected and we need to try to do, to help, to help in many ways. So that is it, right? So that's what I really liked about the video. Of course, there are many other things and uh, it's, it's very interesting. I really liked it. I like your interpretation. I really like your explain. Thank you. And I really like you to share the link for the video. If you can. Uh, yeah, I can share that uh, on, the, on the chat. I will do that. And if you are interested in that channel, that channel shows very good things about saving the planet, um, about environment, about uh, many things. It's, it's a very good channel and the videos are very short, are like five, seven minutes. Uh, so you can learn or you can show to your kids and learn as well. So it's, it's very good, very interesting, very nice. Good, any other question, comment? Okay, so if there is no question, we're gonna finish. Two things. First one, uh, who is going to stay today for the one-on-one? There is only today and tomorrow, and there is no more practice chance. So, who is going to be today? Uh -huh. I'm sorry? Excuse me, teacher. Oh, yes. Okay. So who is going to stay with me in the after class? Anybody? Yeah. Oh, your back. So, nobody, really? To practice English? To ask questions? To discuss anything? I stay so many days because I am sleeping. I'm sorry. Okay. 
I understand. I know that this is difficult. There are just five more minutes, you know. Nobody? Hello? Nobody wants me. Okay, if nobody wants or can't, of course, that is not a problem. Um, another thing, uh, I almost never leave a homework, but for tomorrow, there is homework. So what is going to happen tomorrow? Since we don't have any more classes and we finish the book and we're going to do the survey. Remember that tomorrow we're going to do the survey. I don't know yet what time is going to be because they assign a time. Uh, I'm going to ask today maybe to see what time is going to be. But you need to come ready to speak five minutes about any topic anything that you want to say or discuss or to present, you have five minutes tomorrow to speak, okay? You can speak about anything. If you want to speak about the park near your house or your babies or your favorite movie, your favorite food, the time when you go to Greece, uh, I don't know, anything that you may want to, to, to share, Tomorrow is the time, five minutes, okay? So I'm going to go one by one and we're going to discuss. If there are questions, we are going to ask some questions and we're going to continue that one. Also, I have an activity for tomorrow. I don't know if we are going to have time um, for us to do it, uh, but tomorrow is practice day, okay? So be ready to practice, to ask questions. Why did you do that one? What did you feel? So that will be a good activity, okay? Any questions about the homework? It's okay. Good, perfect. Okay, my friends, so um, do you have any questions in general? Any comments? Okay, so I'm going to check the attendance and then we are going to finish, of course. Let me go here. Okay, Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamez. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solorzano. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Rafael Ernesto. Present. Oh, okay. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good night. Good night. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present. Sandra Gladys Méndez de Ramírez, ah, Ramírez, I'm sorry. Present teacher. Okay. Good William night. Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Okay. Okay, my friends, then it was a pleasure to be here with you tonight. See you tomorrow in the last class. And we're going to have a special dinner. So you can buy pizza and eat there. And I'm going to buy myself 
pizza and we can eat together. So uh, it's going to be the end of and this module. Michelle, tomorrow is is fear the the server. Yeah, tomorrow we're going to do the survey. Yeah. Okay. Good. So um, if you don't have any other questions, see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Rest very well and uh, dream in English. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. And see nice. you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. I like this class. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> yes. I don't want to finish today. <laughs> okay, we can continue. <laughs> <laughs> No, we need to rest. <laughs> okay. Have a good See night. You. Bye bye. Night. Good night. Hello, Lourdes. Are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, Lourdes, are you there? Can you hear me, Lourdes? Hello, Lourdes, are you there? Okay, since that you're not there, I'm going to finish the class. Have a good night. Bye-bye.